North Norfolk, home to England's largest seal colony and considered by many to be the country's bird watching capital. It really is a nature lover's paradise. And no other place in the country has more blue flag beaches than North Norfolk. It's just one of the many reasons why so many escapees choose to come to this beautiful county. Hidden away at the top of East Anglia, in the east of England, you'll find Norfolk, home to just over 900,000 people. So we moved from South Africa in 2003 and then moved to North Norfolk about 10 years ago and it feels like home to me. People are really, really friendly and I don't think I'll move again. I love it here. And if you really want to wave goodbye to the madding crowds, head to the north of the county. Its 100 mile stretch of coastline might be one of Norfolk's most beautiful sites but it's also one of its least populated areas. I moved to North Norfolk about 10 years ago now, but nothing feels like home like North Norfolk does. Um, nothing compares. We've got the coast, we've got beautiful woodlands, but the most important thing, the thing that makes North Norfolk is the people and the community. Now, most people I meet moving to Norfolk are looking for a bit of peace and quiet, a slower pace of life and space in which to live it. All the things today's couple want, but they're also in the market for a property from which to start a new business. We're the other side of 50 now, so it is time to pick up our belongings. Other side of 60. Well, yeah, that is true. So, mm, cracking on. Meet Joe, a PA, and Peter, a retired area manager for a national pub chain. They live in Blunham in Bedfordshire and are regular visitors to North Norfolk. But now they want to make a permanent move there and adopt a completely new lifestyle, running luxury holiday lets. It's about releasing our sort of energy into something quite new for us because we've been working for other people all our lives. We're, we're doing something for ourselves this time. I mean, we've been involved in the hospitality business for, for, for many years and, 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 and it's something that runs through our blood. So we really have got an eye for detail in things that bring people to you when they want to stay somewhere good. We know that we've got to roll up our sleeves, get on with the job, let's get it sorted. And by this time next year, we're going to be living a really good life. It's going to be hard work, but we'll do it. And we're not shirkers for hard work, so let's go for it. With their oldest daughter, Georgia, heading to university in a couple of weeks, they want to make the move before 12-year-old Juliet starts her GCSEs. Well, I really love Norfolk and um, it would be great to grow up in the countryside next to the beach where there's no traffic and I could maybe start horse riding again and get lots of animals. So I think it would be a great opportunity. Top priority for Joe and Peter is a property where they can realise their dreams of running a holiday let business. For their family home, they're after something that's detached with a minimum of three bedrooms and at least an acre of land. They want to be within 30 minutes of the North Norfolk coast and they have a good budget of £700,000. Now, I meet many people escaping to the country who would like a holiday lens. For most of them, I guess, it's kind of a would like to have, not a must have, but for these two, this is front and centre of what they are planning for their future. Take it from me, someone who's done it, there is a lot of hard work involved and a lot of cost. It is not for the faint-hearted, but if you get it right, the rewards, both in terms of finances and home life, can be immense. Well, Peter Joe, welcome to Escape to the Country. This is a part of the world you do know quite well. And you've been thinking about the move for some time, but there's real ambition in this, isn't it? We want to come up here and do like a holiday let business, maybe start with one holiday let. If there's buildings that we can convert, maybe a few more, start with one, do it really well. And if we've got enough land, we want to do like glamping, make it into a family thing. Uh, the kids can get involved and just change our life completely and get out of the nine to five. And we're, we're coming here because we want to sort of 
do something for the family, to make a difference to, to our lives. And so we're going to complete this move as quick as we can and, and, and get here. Well, listening to Peter there, a lot of urgency about this because you have sold your current property, haven't you, Joe? We have. Thankfully, that's all going through as we speak now. So there's a lot riding on this search then and your budget of £700,000. But the good news is, A, we're in Norfolk and B, it's sunny. Yay! Shall we go and have a look? <laughs> we'll go and have a look. Come on, let's see what we can find you. Now, Joe and Peter's plan to create a high-end holiday let business requires a top-notch destination. So our North Norfolk adventure begins in one of the area's most desirable holiday and home buying hotspots, the Georgian market town of Holt. We'll be sending them to explore the town a little later, but right now I'm very excited to show them a rare business opportunity that's come onto the market less than a 10 minute walk from the centre of town. Right then. Well, this is where I thought we would begin. This complex of classic Norfolk Flint outbuildings and property, you'll be glad to know. I mean, in terms of your vision of what you were coming to, Joe, does this begin to, to sort of fit the bill? I think it's lovely. I love the Flint, the Norfolk Flint stone. I think it's got potential, fabulous potential, because it's, it's attractive to look at. It's fabulous in terms of its location. It, it's close to Holt, it's close enough to the, to the North Norfolk Coast Path, which is something we want to sort of market. Yeah. Um, so for guests who are coming here to stay, you know, it, it, it's probably got everything. I mean, we'll need to see it, but, you know. Shall we have a look then? Yeah. Let's... Follow me, let's see what you think. I know Joe and Peter are chomping at the bit to see the business side of things, but we'll start in what could be the family home. This 30-year-old bungalow, sympathetically built to fit right in with the older buildings here. Come on through, grab the door, Peter. We'll start in, uh, in here. Oh, and it's a good space. Yeah, it's got opportunities. I would personally want to change the colouring yep. in here from, from brown yep. to a little dated. Um, but well, the that's the aesthetics, yeah. though, isn't it? You can change all of that and make it your own, but as a space, I think it's super. It's good, it's good yeah. size. We could see ourselves here. Yeah, yeah. could work with Definitely. this. Definitely, could work with this. Right, well, let's have a look at the uh, living room. That's through here, through the diner end. Uh, and this is what you get, complete with, uh, with burner there, which is always a nice touch. This is a really good space, actually. This is really nice and light. I like the fact that you've got dual aspect windows yeah. and the log burner. Love that. It's yeah. nice. That's good. It's nice, yeah. Excellent. So far, so good. There are three bedrooms on offer, one used as a study and another good-sized double. Both are served by a family shower room and, at the end of the property, is the largest bedroom with an ensuite. suite. Right. Yeah, it's nice space. Square, again. Square, isn't it? I you know, like. and it's quite light, actually, isn't it? And there's a lovely en suite in there. And a nice en suite, yeah. yeah. Lovely. A little bit of updating, that would be a really Five. good space, yeah, wouldn't just it? Just the shower ones. So that's the family's accommodation sorted. Time now to check out what could be on offer for guests as we head outside. Now, I must confess, there is no land with this property, but what we do have are these. A splendid two-storey tithe barn, flanked by two smaller single-storey buildings. Set around this central courtyard, all date back to the 1800s and are ripe for converting into luxury holiday lets. There we go. <laughs> Come and feast your eyes on, the, on this lot. Wow. What a space. Just super. And actually, it's a perfect two, three, maybe even get three bedrooms in, yeah. in here. As a family home. Yeah. And no. that could be the holiday lets. Oh, oh, hang on. Uh, you're, you're saying no, family home? I'm thinking family home. What are you home. saying, Peter? I, I, well, I can see the potential for both, but I, as, a, as a let, this is just outstanding. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but I can see why Joe would be so keen to convert this 200-year-old barn into a striking family home. And I love the way you are applying yourselves to the options that this place could give you. With this property, the possibilities are plentiful. It's got a huge potential, hasn't Massive, it? Massive, um, yeah. And it's got some, it looks like it's got a lot of sort of history in here. And it's a lot of space, which is the main thing. So everyone's not going to be on top of each other, which is quite important. What's interesting about this is that you could neatly phase how you do it. Yes. Uh, aim for a season, do one. 
look for that break in season to do another. Yeah, I think that's what we would do. Do do up one, do it really well, market that, bank that money, and then stay property number two, basically, wouldn't we? Bank on and that. just yeah, have like maybe a five year plan. Because you're going to learn from doing mm. the first one what works and what doesn't. This talk of a five-year plan is encouraging and, let's be honest, it's essential because this is one heck of a project. What do you think it's on the market for then, Peter? I think it's going to be on the market for around about £620,000. OK. I think it's lower than that. I'm hoping it'll be on the market for about 585 I wish it were either of those numbers. However, this, given the current climate and the stampede to buy rural property, has achieved an asking price of £700,000. Now, that is its asking price. Yes. That's not to say it's not open to some negotiation, because it won't necessarily be for everyone. No. This modern bungalow, built in a traditional style, has a large kitchen breakfast room, a spacious lounge and three double bedrooms. Outside, three barns, which could be converted into holiday lets, all sit within a central courtyard. Overlooking fields, less than a ten minute walk from one of North Norfolk's most desirable market towns, it's priced at £700,000. When we said we wanted a business opportunity, by Joe, this has got a hell of a business opportunity. Yeah. We did say location was really important for us and it's right there where we want it to be. I think it would be fabulous and what you could command on a weekly rental would be massive. It's just whether it's right for us. I don't know if I want to take on this much of a project. Because it's getting that balance between family life and the business And the business. So as a mum, my brain now is completely conflicted. Now, it might help Joe and Peter to resolve that conflict by seeing for themselves what Holt could offer both them and their future guests. So, we arrange for them to have a meander through the cobbled alleys and hidden courtyards the town is renowned for. Well, this is really pretty, isn't it, around this, here? Yeah. There's an array of independent shops, galleries and cafes, and a 250-year-old family-run department store, of which the locals are, rightly, very proud. Once a month, the Holt Sunday Market celebrates the best of Norfolk's independent makers and food producers, and the town has its own app connecting local businesses and residents. One of those enterprises is Huff and Puff Cycles, a bike hire company on the outskirts of Holt. And as keen cyclists themselves, it's an activity that Joe and Peter wish to make available to their guests. Owner Ross Jones kindly agreed to tell them about the Norfolk cycling scene. Hi Joe, hi Peter. Hi Ross. Hi Ross. How, How are you doing? doing? Very nice well. to see you. Norfolk's got loads of places to ride, particularly North Norfolk up here. A lot of the interest is the coastline, um, which has got some lovely views, a really interesting coast road if you don't mind a bit of traffic. But also when you head inland, it's really quiet, so some mm. lovely little back lanes. There's lots of things like that where you can ride on road but in quiet areas. Right. But then we've also got some good parklands. We've got places like Blicklin Hall Estate, which has got its own pathway through oh, there. Yeah. We've got Sheringham Park, which is a National Trust park. We've got Felbrigg Hall, which again is National Trust. And lots of really good family-friendly cycling to be done off-road through those. And then there's the Pedal Festival as well, and that runs out at Holcombe Hall, which oh, is brilliant. just up the Norfolk coast. So that's a really nice three-day event, which is well worth going to as well. Lots of interesting things going on there. Fabulous. Do you rent out cycles? Yeah, to... absolutely. We do offer uh, an off-site delivery service as well. Oh, right. So we can, we can cater for anything from a couple for the weekend through to quite a large group as oh, well. That's brilliant. So, yeah, absolutely something we do. And that's delivering our normal bikes as well as electric bikes as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Have to get the leaflets then, definitely. Yeah, perfect time to be doing Put it. them in there, yeah. holiday yeah. let. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very are. much for that. That's great well. news. We're heading a little further inland now to our next stop, the curiously named village of Stratton Strawless. Home to around 500 people, it was named after its soil quality, which was favourable for timber production, but not for straw. 
Despite feeling like it's deep in the countryside, Joe and Peter will be reassured to know that the coastal town of Cromer, regarded by many as the seaside capital of Norfolk, is less than 30 minutes away by car. And half a mile away from the main Cromer Road is where we find this, our next property. Now, it presents something quite different because, having listened to Joe and Peter, we've chosen a property that puts family life sharply in focus and allows the business to take a back seat. Right then. A bit different to our first property. It's certainly different. I'm very open-minded. So, uh, excited to have a look around. Joe, what do you think? At the moment, jury's out, but excited to see. Right then, let's see what the jury think at the end of this. Follow me. This spacious detached bungalow has undergone extensive renovations and style-wise is actually rather similar to their existing home, so I am quietly confident. I don't think this is probably what you were expecting to find. No, I should have dressed up for this. <laughs> this is... This is already I'm quite been done. taken aback, actually. Yeah? Really taken aback. I I'm ashamedly surprised. Beautiful. Amazing. Wow. So this would this would work then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's amazing. immaculate. Well, I wonder what you think of this. Come in here. Uh, the uh, the main living room. This is lovely. Should it's not be. what I expected as you come up that drive. No, it, you know, you think, oh, it's a bungalow, and it, and it just opens up. It's so modern. It's just fantastic. It, wow. It's an off-the-shelf solution, isn't it? Yes, oh, it is. Just, you know, move in, there, there it is. Yeah. And what we were saying about family life and the, the house versus a business, I'm now thinking, well, actually, family life is, has got to be right in the heart of it, and then the business, maybe lower your standards and maybe to start with one holiday let rather than a whole field of glamping and all of that. This is a family home to be proud of and I can see it might be swaying Joe in particular. But we're not finished yet. There's a whopper of a sunroom to take a look at. Oh my word, look. This is a conservatory and a half, isn't it? I mean, you could have some proper parties in here. Oh my word, you could. This. Um, We're slightly speechless. Yeah. Uh, I first. <laughs> and that's very rare for this one, I can tell you. Those trifold doors give a glimpse of what's to enjoy outside, but before we head there, I'm sending the couple off to explore the bedrooms. There are three spacious doubles in this house, including a main suite, which has a particularly fancy dressing room with no shortage of storage. So this must be the main bedroom. It's big, isn't it? It's lovely. Of course, you've got no wardrobes in here because you've got... The walk-in wardrobe. walk-in wardrobe next door. Why would you need to? It's oh, look, there's a nice suite. Very colourful. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? What a size. Now to the business side of things. The opportunities here are less ambitious than this morning's property, but that might suit Joe and Peter far better. Tucked away behind this immaculately kept garden is this range of former stable buildings. This was obviously the barn, and then you've got three lovely little loose boxes here, and it obviously used to enjoy access through those gates to the front of the property. If their plans for holiday letting grow somewhat, who knows, with the right sort of permissions, maybe the footprint of this building might come in handy. There's also one last part of this property to tackle, this true gem of a garden. Amongst thoughtfully planted flower beds, there's an enormous outdoor dining area and a lovely summer house with a kind of beach bar vibe. It is, in total, just under an acre, the whole plot. Plot, okay. yeah, lovely. Front to back. If you're in the market for a ride on mower, Peter, this is the garden for you. You've, yeah. you've <laughs> got to have a ride on mower. <laughs> yeah, and I think the bottom end of the garden is absolutely delightful uh, and it overlooks a nature reserve. Really? Come and have a look. So there we have it. They've seen it all and just need to put a price on it. How much do you think our second property is on the market for? Oh, this is awful, this bit. <laughs> I think it's over our budget. I think it's on the market for £725,000. Well over. Peter? I was thinking over £700,000, maybe seven hundred and ten. 
OK. This is on the market for offers in excess of £625,000. We might just kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might. I might just fall down. I'm delighted. Oh, my word. I can't believe that. There you go. 625. This recently renovated detached family home has a large kitchen breakfast room with a slick contemporary finish, a generous sized lounge and an enormous sunroom. It sits on a beautifully landscaped plot of about an acre, has an old stable block that provides holiday let potential and is marketed for offers over £625,000. It's made us realise really what's important and it's the family time and something nice to live in but also having the business opportunity but we don't have to go mad with that we can keep it on a smaller scale have an income and actually just be satisfied with that and be happy I'd be happy with that so it's really useful it's given us you know it's really made us think about what we want in the future yeah. As our first day draws to a close, I've one more property to show Joe and Peter, but this one isn't for sale. Spink's Nest in Hunworth, a couple of miles south of Holt, is a luxury holiday let that owners Anna Perez and Alan Flett created back in 2019. They invested in professional glossy photos to help market their unique accommodation, and they very kindly agreed to let Joe and Peter pick their brains. What do you think makes back special that, that people really want to come to, to that? Well, way back when, my, my brief to the various architects was I wanted something fun, stylish, sort of a boutique cottage. It make people happy, yeah. you know. Which... People come and are inspired when they walk in the door, really? literally, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's a great, um, great way of looking at it, yeah. Which well, is lovely, you know. And I think um, because it's a holiday home, you can yeah. be much more theatrical with the interiors. Yes. It doesn't have to right. be a practical house. Right. You can just go and take it the extra mile. Right. It, this is the destination. Right, it's not, OK. It's not Holt or... No, most of, and most people who come here have never been to North Norfolk before. Oh, really? Yeah. You're finding... Oh, right, yeah. so you've made it so bespoke mm. that yeah. people actually just want to visit this. And do you find it quite a seasonable seasonable business, or mm. is it all year round? And All year round. Really? I mean, people see it as a destination for special occasions. It's right. anniversaries and birthdays. We had, a, we had an engagement last week. So how do you find living right next door to your holiday let? I think it works great for us. Having it so close makes it a lot easier to manage. You know, I, I always come and have a look after the cleaners have been, so I, I'm happy that everything is They've as I want job. it to be. Yeah. And we've met great people as well, so it's yeah, been really it's good lovely. to meet all, the, all our guests and you know, have a chat with people. Right. As yeah. Also, you get feedback. You can see you know, yeah. what people are enjoying, what yes. they do in the area. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it keeps right. us from getting lonely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you want to have a look inside? Oh, yes, oh, yes please. please. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Fantastic design has enabled Alan and Anna to squeeze a lot into this diminutive cottage. Oh, wow. Look at this. It's fantastic, isn't it? There's an open-plan dining kitchen fitted with bespoke units and zinc worktops. Upcycled and reclaimed furniture is used throughout. The bedroom has a king-size bed with designer linen and the cosy lounge has a stunning feature fireplace with a log-burning stove. That's amazing. What a great use of space. It's, it's just unique as yeah, well, isn't it? It's beautiful. And you know the clever thing? Alan was determined that this should not look like a hotel suite. And right. it doesn't, does it? It, it doesn't. No. And I think that's a really interesting kind of rule of thumb to take away with you. I think it, it also makes you realise that actually if you create something quite unique like this or very special that's different to your home, the location comes sort of 50-50 with it. It isn't the be-all and end-all. People are coming here because they want this. Well, you're absolutely right. This is a destination in its own right. But, yeah, we've got to go because, guess what? Their guests are coming back because it's fully booked. No surprise. <laughs> Off you go. The latest figures from the Office of National Statistics show that more than 5,000 households up sticks and moved to North Norfolk in the 12 months to June 2020. 
If you're thinking of following suit, here's the lowdown on property prices. The average cost of a detached house in North Norfolk is just over £405,000. That's about £15,000 higher than the UK average. To get a bit more detail about the state of property play here, Amanda McGee from Coast and Country Estate Agents has kindly agreed to have a chat. What's the market like here in North Norfolk? At the moment, um, there is a lot of demand and not enough supply. We are selling properties um, before they hit the market um, and many of them are selling for well over their asking price. Are you seeing an increasing number of buyers looking to invest in, in holiday let properties here? Yes, definitely, because many people, um, you know, now they are coming here to obviously have the lovely coastal home, but also if they can earn an income from it, that's a huge bonus. And roughly speaking, what would you expect a well-appointed two-bedroom holiday let to achieve a week? You'd be looking between about 700 and 900 a week at the moment. And I suppose in the past it has been a very seasonal business, but... Is that changing? It is. I think because people haven't been able to go on holiday, so, you know, all year round at the moment. So it's a good investment if you can make it. Definitely is, yes. Joe and Peter have a budget of £700,000 with which to start their new life here. But rest assured, the North Norfolk lifestyle can be yours for considerably less. Take this, a detached property with two reception rooms, four bedrooms and a garden that looks out onto one of the area's best beaches. It's on the market for £475,000. Right at the heart of the same village, this six-bedroom house comes complete with a cafe, giving you not just a new home, but a new business as well. It's priced at £525,000. Or, for a short break, this unique dome house is a great base from which to explore North Norfolk's countryside and coastline, with prices starting from £90 per night. Well, as you can see, this run of spectacular weather continues as our house search here in Norfolk with Joe and Peter comes to its conclusion. Now, so far, they've been genuinely excited and interested in the options we have shown them, but there has been a shift in focus. They kicked off their house search very much looking for a business first and a home second, but that has fallen more into balance between a business and a home. And I'm hoping that our final offering, our mystery house, will give them the balance they are seeking. It is an absolute gem, an escape to the country classic. We're travelling into uncharted territory now, for Joe and Peter at least, as we head west to the village of Wiganhall St Mary Magdalene, or Magdalene for short, eight miles south of Kings Lynn. Well, what another lovely day we've got for your final offering. What are we expecting? Are we, are we looking forward to it? Oh, immensely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excited now. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, you can see here part of the kind of ooze network of waterways that eventually run up uh, to Kings Lynn. And um, in the distance there, the church of Magdalen. Absolutely gorgeous little village, this. Two years ago, it was runner-up in the Pride of Norfolk Awards. Oh, really? This year, they won it. Oh, fab. Ooh. So, <laughs> life is getting better here, I guess. So, I'm going to leave you to have a little wander around the village, uh, and I'm going to go ahead to the Mystery House. Fabulous. Magdalen's 700 or so residents benefit from a local pub and chippy. Just what you need after a leisurely walk along the river. Well, while Joe and Peter continue to explore the village, here's a little sneak preview of what our final offering is going to provide for them. Now, they currently live in a mock Georgian number. This is not mock. This is absolutely the real thing. So I'm hoping that the degree of familiarity this property may offer them may also provide a sense of comfort in making what, let's face it, will be ultimately a momentous decision when they find and buy their new home. Dating back to the 1850s, this detached house has previously been run as a B&B &B and has a flexible layout that could fit in nicely with Joe and Peter's business ambitions. But out here, I think, is where this particular property really comes to life because it gives them about an acre of land with which to play. So is this the perfect balance of family home and business potential? It might just be. Right then, welcome to the Mystery House. What do you think of this? Oh, my word. Gosh. Yeah, it's lovely. This is like home from home. We live in a mock Georgian. I know. So this is a bit more 
original. Uh, it's a lot more authentic. Yes. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. It looks like the manor house or the vicarage, yeah. doesn't it? Yes. Beautiful. Super. Let's have a look. Okay. Follow me. We're going to use the back door. It's the country. That's what we all do. <laughs> no one ever uses the front door. No. Grab the door, Peter. OK. Let's start with the kitchen, then. Oh, it's not the biggest kitchen, mm -hmm. but... Suits the house. It suits the house and it is workable. That is the right answer. It suits the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been hand-built, hasn't it? You can yeah. tell this isn't off of a factory shelf. It's not yeah. our style, but it doesn't matter. It's an authentic yeah. property rather than yeah. a modern box. Yeah. yeah. Right, then. Let's move on. Go down the corridor, take the first left. Okay. After you, Peter. Thank you. Little dining space uh, in here. But uh, let's check this out. So... What do you think? Snug. This is the snug, or is this the living room? Either or. You've got right. another room just like this next door. Right. Uh, so it's entirely up to you. It's just a cute little room, isn't it? I love these old doors. Just... Th these are fantastic. On the other side of the entrance hall is a second reception room used as a library. And that leads through to this timber-framed orangery with floor-to-ceiling windows and doors out onto the garden. Superb. Yeah, this yes, is lovely. Love this. Yeah. The sun shining through and here, sitting here reading a book with a glass of something cold in your hand. Very nice. Yeah. 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 So down here, you've got a twin room or double uh, en suite. Here's a thought then. If that were your let mm -hmm. and you were to potentially block off that doorway, albeit temporarily, when you had it in business, yeah. you could give this to your guests as their living room. You mm -hmm. could think about just opening up for key periods when you're going to achieve your revenue yeah. and then for the rest of the year it's yours and when the family comes yeah. to stay en masse it's yours to use mm -hmm. as you wish so it's a more flexible kind of arrangement than perhaps we've looked at before it's thrown in a oh. new a new plane of thought that's, that's all. a new plane of thought is exactly how i would mm. see yes. it it's something that could work you'd certainly want to use this part of the time because it's, it's such a super room isn't it Although there are three further bedrooms tucked away upstairs, I appreciate that sharing part of your home with guests isn't the easiest concept to get your head around, but here it could pay dividends. However, it's not the only means of making money from this property, because outside, amongst the acre and a quarter of land on offer, is this rather delightful apple and pear orchard. My thought with this is that if I were in the market again for a shepherd's hut or some other kind of glamping option, mm -hmm. this might be the place yep. uh, in which to do it. It's definitely an option down here, yeah. and you're away from, you're not going to disturb any of the sort of new neighbours around you. Yeah, no, it's good. It's all really it's, good. It's a ton of property. Let's deal with the final bit, shall we? How much it might cost you, Peter? I'm going 725,000. OK, Joe. I would probably say it was at the top of our budget and I'd say 700. Interesting. This is on the market for offers over 600,000 pounds. No. Excuse me. <laughs> You're having a laugh. <laughs> This detached Victorian property has three reception rooms, a stunning orangery and a traditional country-style kitchen. There are four bedrooms and the flexible layout could provide a self-contained holiday let. With over an acre of land, including an established orchard, it's on the market for offers above £600,000. I think this house offers tremendous opportunity. The ambience when you drive up to the property and you see those beautiful gates, that sets the scene of that countryfied life and the fact that you've got all of this land that you can tack on a business opportunity to that home, then that's just lovely, isn't it, for us? Um, it's just where it is. We need to sort of have a look around yeah, because we... this is an area that we hadn't actually researched ourselves. But it is the sort of forever home that we, we were looking for. This is Wells Next the Sea, loved by holidaymakers for its unspoilt beach, 
crabbing on the quayside and scoffing fish and chips on the harbour wall. I've come down to the quay here to meet 33-year-old Ashley Mullinger, also known as the female fisherman. Ashley. Jules. Nice to see you again. How are you? Yeah, good. You? Lovely to be back in Wales. You know, I do love it here. I've met Ashley on several occasions before and never tire of hearing how she ditched the day job for the high seas. How did you get into it? Basically, a trip out on a mackerel boat about 12 years ago and the skipper couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. 12, 13 years ago, you go on a boat for a fishing trip yeah. and it transforms your ambitions. Yeah. What were you doing before that? So I was working in an office uh, doing things like logistics management, uh, managing teams of engineers, and it felt like an existence. Was it a surprise to you that you felt so kind of enlivened to get into the fishing business? Massively. I've got no maritime uh, background in my family, anything like that, but just being out there that one day something just clicked and it was like, this is where I need to be, this, is, this feels right. Ashley's main catches are the shellfish for which North Norfolk is famed and since it's the height of crab season right now, we're going to have a go at dressing a crab. Now, if the prospect of wrestling with these armour-plated crustaceans seems daunting, you're not alone. I'll admit I'm no shellfish fan, but Ashley tells me it's actually pretty easy and very tasty. So, I'm going to give it a whirl. So you're going to show me how to dress them? Yes. Are you an expert? No. <laughs> Full disclosure, we'll model our way through this together. <laughs> Freshly caught yesterday, these crabs have already been boiled. If you hold your crab yeah. in front of you like that, you've got a kind of a, a seam. All you need to do is just pull those two apart. And literally take it right off? Yeah. There. Perfect. See here, this is their mouthpiece. So all you're going to want to do is push down and you'll hear a click. Yep. yep. So that's its jaw. Yeah. So that just pulls out. So then in here, you've got meat. So all you need to do is just... Scrape it out. Scrape, just not even scrape it out. Just break it away from the shell. Brown crab meat is mostly found in this shell cavity, and its rich flavour with soft texture makes it ideal for sauces and pâtés. Now, I mean, the old nippers... They can come off. I mean, they, they look terrifying, don't they? I mean, they, they, are, they are some predator, aren't they? Yes. You, won't, you don't want to get your finger in there either. I, I mean, do you ever get that when you're fishing? Yeah, if, you're not, if you're not fast enough. The meat found in the main body part and claws is the more delicately flavoured, sweeter and fleshier white meat. Pull them apart. One. One. Two. Two. Yeah. The, cr the crab might be winning at this point. Did you, tw did you, tw <laughs> did you twist yours a bit? No, she's brute strength. <laughs> Come on, Jogs. What does that tell you? Vector's <laughs> TV presenter versus hardened fisherman. I probably need to eat more crab because, as well as loads of protein for strength... God, crikey! Which clearly I don't have, it's also packed with omega-3 oils thought to help lower blood pressure and improve cognitive function. Now, who's for a crab, Sarni? Bit of lemon. Oh, you're going lemon? I'm going to go lemon. I'm going to go fancy, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound, I You guess. see the sort of chef-y flourish? You've got, you've got to do this if you're... <laughs> Rick Stein would be jealous yeah, absolutely, right now, yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Let's try. I'm actually genuinely quite surprised at that. It's mm -hmm. amazing, isn't it? Mm hmm Who knew? Great with rocket and chilli and pasta. Hmm. You know, I've been avoiding this for 50-odd years, but maybe all that's about to change because of you. And Fantastic. Today. And this crab. Fantastic. Ash, thank you so much. Oh, you're more than welcome. I will see you again, no doubt, I'm on the sure. quayside. <laughs> yeah. Here's to you. Well, it is now decision time for Joe and for Peter. It's always the case. We love to give our buyers plenty to think about, but maybe this week we've given them too much to consider. They've got an awful lot of work to do to make sense of it all, but make sense of it, they must. So what is the outcome going to be? Well, let's go and ask them. Well, how's things then? All good. All good? Sound a bit nervous there, Joe. Well, it's just so much to think about. Our brain is 
done a 360, I think. We've started with business focus, family second. Then we went through and we thought, actually, no, family has to come first, business has to come second. And then it came to sort of location. But when you look at the sort of areas that you can get the sort of property we would like, I think we, we're coming to the conclusion that, that there has to be a balance. If I could give you the keys to any one of our three offerings, which ones would you want, Peter? I think the Mystery House is definitely the favourite. I would agree. Every time <laughs> we turned a corner, there was something else, and it was just stunning, really. It fits most of what we were thinking of. Yeah. We need to have an, another look at it in terms of its business viability. You have to have a location that, that gives people a reason to visit you. Let us know what you do, because whatever happens in the future, and it's going to happen fairly shortly, isn't it, one way or the other? Absolutely. Uh, I'd love to come back and see where you end up. It's been an absolute hoot, yeah, hasn't it? And it it's, is. It's, we've learned yeah. so much, and about ourselves. We've learned a lot about ourselves and what we really want in life, so it's been great. Yeah. Good. You. So time not wasted. Definitely, Definitely not. not. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, here's to you, and best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I think it is fair to say we have all revelled in what the Norfolk property market has thrown our way this week as we've tried to meet the challenge set by Peter and Joe in finding them initially a business and a home to go with it. But clearly, the emphasis of that cocktail has shifted as they've wrestled with the infamous work-life balance. Now they are firmly focused on putting family life first. And surely, whatever they decide to do, that is the perfect foundation for any future escape to the country. I'll see you next time.